thrilled I am for this episode. I get an opportunity to showcase my favorite all-time artist, Raphael Soriano. Hortensa, who I know from Miami, invited me to see her father's work. Now, you know, I love art, so of course I took the opportunity. I went to his show. He was there. It's very exciting, very exciting. Hortensa introduces me to her dad, my favorite all-time artist as, a, as an artist. So, Horty, I, you're a doll. Hi, Dina. So happy to say hi to you. I uh, can't tell you how proud I am of your show, uh, Dina 6 TV. Um, so happy that you're able to feature my father's work, uh, Rafael Soriano, in your great uh, little TV show there on YouTube. It really showcases some great artists. I uh, also share with you, he is also my favorite artist. So good luck to you. I love you. When I walked into the room and saw his work, I was forever changed. It just took my breath away. As you stand and you look at his work, the work itself moves, it's breathing, it's living. I see God in Raphael. I got tears in my eyes because I see God in Raphael, Soriano's work. Wardy had told me there was a documentary being made. As soon as I read that the documentary was live, I contacted him and he said yes to letting me showcase his documentary. Beyond my wildest dreams moment for me, these years later to be able to showcase his work on my little itty bitty show. I thank you, David. I thank you, Hortensa. And most of all, I thank you, Raphael Soriano. The way you portray your vision of God and your pain and your life and your happiness through your work. It's called Into the Light. And wow, it's the Into the Light. You have, you're gonna be like blown away. David was kind enough to send me a clip, so I'll let him explain what his vision was for this piece. Hi everybody, this is David Schleyer, director of Into the Light, a film about the life and work of Cuban-American painter Rafael Soriano. We just came back from a recent screening in Miami at the Cuban Heritage Collection, and we're happy to share a few clips with you here on Dina 6 TV. It's a film not only about art, but a family, faith, and the experience of exile. I hope you enjoy the clips. Exiles tend to function in one way or the other. Um, you either are perpetually weeping for the lost homeland, or you realize that the sun will shine on you uh, wherever you are, and you learn to be at home everywhere else in the world. has this dream that has been uh, shared with me by his, his daughter, Hortensia. And in this dream, uh, a figure takes him. He asks to go see uh, his home in Matanzas. And the figure takes him like an angel, you know, traveling with you through the skies, shows him his homeland. Uh, he sees it, he, he sees his home. And then all of a sudden, there is a, a fury of galloping horses. And before you know it, uh, he's back here in Miami. And I think we can only read that dream or vision as, as a, a reckoning, a kind of a, both closing and opening a door. My father came at 42. He was already a mature, established artist, and he gets here and he has nothing. He is a nobody. He is a nobody. I can see people not wanting to work again and losing that spirit makes total sense. But when you've got that inside you, you may explode if you don't paint it. Even in his geometrics, you see a lot of profundity in the colors in the textures. You can see that he was yearning for something to go beyond that. 
And as we looked at his mature works, everything that we saw pointed to this spiritual and mystic element. It hit me very deeply and very viscerally. And you see, you see this face looking up at anguish. And I thought nobody could have expressed that as well as Soriano did. It looks like this figure is sort of fading into this purpley background. And that I just imagine is really how it feels when you're losing control of your faculties. In this new artistic vocabulary that he developed in uh, while in exile, I think reflects that need to enter into and to engage the experience of trauma and loss, uh, and nevertheless to do it in a way that in the end is hopeful, in the end leads one through the darkness into the light, uh, a light that is that one sees in, in virtually all of his more mature paintings. I do think that in his late paintings from the 90s that he is able to visualize the next world. Soriano was contemplating as well and was understanding in a way and portraying to us that there is nothing to fear in terms of taking that next step. Rafael Soriano is part of what is generally defined as the third Cuban avant-garde, that is the third generation of modern artists uh, that emerged in the island. He's the generation of artists born in the 1920s, and they really come of age uh, as artists in the 40s and early 50s. And he is a pioneer in geometric and concrete abstraction. And then once he left Cuba in 1962, uh, his work goes to one of the most extraordinary transformations, I would say, in the history of Latin American art, uh, if not modern art in general, and becomes something that goes beyond the nature of painting and speaks of a mysterious and spiritual values. To know him and to historically know how important he was and to honor that life and that spirit and that talent and he continues to give, and I think that's the mark of a truly brilliant artist for in time and eternity. It's un encanto, un se quedan embelezados, embelezados con los cuadros, sí. Así que yo le digo, bueno, Dios permite que su pintura viaje y llegue a muchas regiones donde puedan apreciarlos y, y ser felices con ellas.